Amitabha Sadna. Face in front appears the Guru in the form of Amitabha, surrounded by an inconceivable retinue of Bodhisattvas. Namo. <laughs> To the three jewels and the three roots, the places of protection, I go for refuge. In order to establish all beings in Buddhahood, I give rise to the mind set on supreme awakening. With sincere faith, I pay homage to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas abiding in the ten directions and three times. I offer flowers, incense, lamps, fragrances, food, music, and the like, actually arranged and mentally created. Supreme gathering, please accept them. I confess all evil deeds, the ten non-virtues, the five acts without interval and I ha- that I have committed, overpowered by mental affliction since beginning this time until now. I rejoice in the merit of all the virtue accumulated in the three times by the Shravakas, Praktya Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, ordinary beings, and the like. Please turn the wheel of the Dharma, of the greater and lesser vehicles, and the teachings common to both according to the aspirations and diverse mental capacities of sentient beings, until samsaras empty do not pass into nirvana, but compassionately look upon sentient beings drowning in the ocean of suffering. May all the merit I have accumulated become the cause of awakening, and may I soon become a glorious guide of beings. The field of accumulation dissolves into me, Thus the mind of the four immeasurables has arisen within the mind streams of myself and all sentient beings. May 
May all sentient beings have happiness. May they be free from all suffering. May they never be separate from happiness. May they abide in great equanimity. Existence, all phenomena of samsara and nirvana are empty by nature. Not realizing this, how afflicted are deluded beings in samsara. My own awareness appears as a white hree, the manifestation of unified emptiness, clarity, and compassion. The hree transforms into myself, appearing as Chenrezig seated upon a cushion of lotus and moon. I have one face and four arms, two are joined at the heart, and the other two hold a lotus and a garland. Peaceful and loving and peaceful and with loving countenance, I am dressed in the garments of Sambhogakaya Buddha, sitting in cross legged posture, my lower body is enfolded in a lotus. In the space in front, upon a seat of lotus and moon, appears a red hri gleaming with light. The light radiates, pleasing the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the ten directions and gathering their knowledge, love, and power. The light then dissolves back into the Hri. Again, light rays radiate to the six realms, purifying the karmic visions of self-grasping and habitual imprints of sentient beings. The light gathers back, and the Hri transforms into the supreme protector of beings, Buddha Amitabha. He is bright red like a mountain of rubies with one face and two arms in equipose mudra, holding a begging bowl. He is garbed in the three dharma robes and sits in cross-legged posture. Ceaselessly looking upon beings with eyes of compassion, he appears as the great embodiment of all Buddhas. On his right is the noble Chenrezig with one face and two arms, holding a white lotus with the left hand, 
white and adorned with jewels, he stands upright. To the left of the Lord is the Bodhisattva Vajrapani, with one face and two arms, holding a Vajra in the left hand. Blue and adorned with jewels, he stands upright. They are surrounded by an assembly of Bodhisattvas. The three places of the principal Lord are marked with the three syllables. From the syllables, white, red, and blue light radiates to the ten directions, and in particular to the pure land of Sukhavati invoking the heart pledge of Amitabha and his retinue, who then instantly appear at this place. <laughs> Home. In the great blessed sphere of my own primordially pure awareness abides Amitabha and Renu as the naturally present innate radiance. From the beginning, the Samaya being and wisdom being are one, yet your form manifests from the expanse of great love and compassion in accordance with the mental inclinations of beings. Following your heart pledge, come here to this place and be seated indivisibly from the mandala of the Samaya being. <laughs> Samaya Dita Sims in the bay, you think. 
I offer this water and dove with eight attributes, with the nature of generosity to the mouths of the victorious ones. May there be perfect fortune for all beings. I offer this foot cleansing water, clear, cool, pristine, and exquisite, and with the nature of morality to the feet of the victorious ones. May all beings be relieved from the torment of existence. I offer various beautiful celestial flowers that have the nature of patience, to the eyes of the victorious ones. May all beings be endowed with the seven attributes of the higher realms. I offer naturally sweet-smelling scents and blended incense that has the nature of diligence to the noses of the victorious ones. May all beings become free from the bonds of existence. I offer this precious, radiant, and lustrous lamp that has the nature of meditation to the hearts of the victorious ones. May all beings clear away the dense darkness of their deluded minds. I offer fragrant medicinal elixir, saffron, and the like, which have the nature of transcendent knowledge to the bodies of the victorious ones. May all beings realize the inner nature of phenomenon. I offer food endowed with the essence of a hundred tastes, with the nature of method to the tongues of the victorious ones. May all beings be sustained by the food of samadhi. I offer harmonious musical sounds, such as those of conch shell, drum, and bell, which have the nature of power to the ears of the victorious ones. May all beings be endowed with the awakening mind. I offer the five desirables that appease the senses and have the nature of prayer to the victorious ones. May all beings be satisfied by untainted bliss. I offer the eight auspicious substances, the eight auspicious symbols, and the seven royal attributes which have the nature of wisdom to the victorious ones. May all beings attain the attributes of Buddhahood. Om Sarva Punza Manga Samandrasa Ena Samaye All owned and unowned things of the entire infinite billion-fold universe, my own body, enjoyments, and all possessions, I offer without holding anything back to the pure land of Sukhavati. May the self-grasping of beings be thereby fully pacified. May they be endowed with the awakening mind, and may their birth in the pure land be unobstructed. Realizing that my own mind is the Buddha, I pay homage on the ultimate level. Abiding within ungraspable, empty awareness, everything comprised within appearance and existence is offered. Deluded perceptions of dualistic grasping are confessed within the expanse of Dharmata. I rejoice within the state of the spontaneous completion of the three kayas. 
the Dharma wheel of unceasing compassion will always turn. Abide within the natural Dharmakaya that pervades all samsara and nirvana in infinite pervasiveness where there is no reference point of the three spheres, dedication will always take place. Sukhavati, you unceasingly look upon sentient beings with compassion. Homage and praise to Amitabha, who abiding in equipose follows his pledge to act for the purpose of beings. To Chenreze Vajrapani and the other Bodhisattvas, the noble assembly of Arhats, and the gathering of deities abiding in Sukhavati, I humbly pay homage and offer praise with body, speech, and mind. Ranjitewanzodogara Page 17. At the heart of myself, appearing as Chinrizig on a moon disk, is a Hri surrounded by the six syllable mantra circling clockwise. From it, light radiates and a white mantra garland issues forth, emerging from my heart and dissolves into the heart of the deity visualized in front. Thus, Amitabha's compassionate heart pledge of body, speech, and mind is invoked. From the mantra garland around the Hri at the heart of Amitabha, a red mantra garland of light emerges from his mouth, enters my mouth, and I obtain blessings and attainments. In this way, the mantra circles continuously between myself and Amitabha. The multicolored light issuing from the circling mantra garland pleases the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, purifies the three types of obscurations of all sentient beings in the three realms and the universe, and beings transform into the pure land of Sukhavati.
Amitabha, look at the mind that is free of subject-object duality. There is no other Amitabha than that. How wondrous is the truth body of self-knowing awareness. Ah, 
the Dharmapala practice called the Soka practice. Mm-hmm. 
Until awakening, I take refuge in the Buddha Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. By the merit of generosity and other good deeds, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. Until awakening, I take refuge in the Buddha Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. By the merit of generosity and other good deeds, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they not be separated from the happiness that is free from sorrow. May they rest in equanimity free from attachment and aversion. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they not be separated from the happiness that is free from sorrow. May they rest in equanimity free from attachment and aversion. <laughs> the Yadam deity from the seed syllable at my heart emanate Ram, Yam, and Kam. Fire, wind, and water burn, scatter, and wash away the faults and defects of the Torma. Above wind and fire is a hearth of skulls. Above that is a vast and spacious skull filled with the five meats and five nectars. The five meats are marked with Om, Hum, Tam, Hri, and Ah, and the five nectars with Mam, Lam, Bam, Pam, and Tam. A wind of hum emerges from the nostrils, blowing, stirring, and lighting the fire, which melts and boils the substances. The defects bubble over, and the pure essence fills the skull to the brim. Above a moon disk lid, hum, ah, and om are stacked one above the other. Light radiates from these and gather nectar, which merges with the syllables. The three syllables and moon disk melt into light and dissolve into the nectar. Thus it is transformed into an ocean of wisdom nectar. Om ah hum ha ho se Om ah hum ha ho se Om ah hum ha ho se Ranga dhoga saole Untru lama yadata Kanro chu jong sume tso Nor la so jong yadata Light radiates from the seed syllable at my heart, inviting the Lama, Yidam, and Akinis, the protectors and guardians of the Dharma, wealth gods, guardians of the directions, local spirits, obstructing spirits, karmic creditors, and the six classes of beings who then gather before me like bellowing clouds. Yeah, 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 yeah
According to their ranking order, these guests partake of the torma with light tubes emerging from their raja tongues and thus are pleased and satisfied. Please consider me, ho, please consider me, ho, please consider me. Glorious Vajra guardian, great black one, and Haruka, glorious great Bharava, by nature you are one within Dharmata. In essence, you are the same within primordial wisdom, and in character you are equal in unhindered activity. Hero who defeats all unfavorable circumstances, you are the foremost lord of all appearance and existence and of all gods and demons, wrathful local guardian, great leader of activity oppressors, invincible sovereign of radiant splendor. You protect awareness holding yogis as yogins as if they were your own children, and you assess the absorption of oath bound practitioners. You are endowed with the radiance of peace, the splendor of increasing and the power of magnetizing activity. You are swift in activities of liberating savage foes and hindrances. Your mighty skill in protecting the teachings is sublime. Powerful Lord with the name, the one endowed with mighty Vajra Rath, a great warrior God of yogins, please heed me. Please dwell in this holy shrine of enlightened body, speech, and mind of myself, the yogin called Vajra Haruka. 
Please act to conquer the dread of the four Maras and all obstacles along my path of supreme bliss whereby I will accomplish unsurpassed awakening. Please cause me to encounter the Samadhi companion that will guide me on the authentic path. Until I attain awakening, help me to never deviate onto mistaken paths with body, speech, and mind, and cause my mind to turn toward freedom and awakening. May all unfavorable circumstances in this world be vanquished. May perfect auspiciousness and goodness pervade and increase. May God's spirits and humans be brought under control, and at all times and in every circumstance, may enlightened activities be accomplished according to my supplications. As you are the glory and protector of all wandering beings, please perform activities to grant supreme and common cities without obstruction and effortlessly. May I vanquish all unfavorable circumstances, the enemies and hindrances with wrong views and the like, and may perfect auspiciousness and goodness pervade and prevail. Mahri, by the power of your compassion and previous aspirations, Mother Achi Choki Droma arise from the Dharma sphere and look upon me from the space of primordial wisdom. Miraculously descend upon this activity mandala. Mother Achi, Lady of Nanam, powerful Dharma Tara, Wisdom Tara, Samaya Tara, magnetizing goddess, flesh eating Karma Dakini, Noble Lady Tashi Saringma, Meo Lopsangma, Tekart Choksama, Tingi Shalsangma, and Chopin Trinksama, protectors of the lineage forefathers and protectors of frightful hermitages, protectors with Samaya who pledged to protect the teachings of the Kagyu lineage. Your luminous wisdom never fades, your compassion never withholds, your blessings are never far, and your power is unobstructed. All of you bless us, yogins, and our retinues through your enlightened body. Bless us through your enlightened speech. Bless us through your enlightened mind. Bless us through your enlightened activities. Bless us through your enlightened qualities. Act so as to conquer adverse circumstances and the dread of the four Maras. Please cause me to encounter the Samadhi companion that will guide me on the true path. Thus, until I attain awakening, help me never to deviate onto mistaken paths with body, speech, and mind, but cause my mind to turn toward freedom and awakening. May all unfavorable circumstances in this world be vanquished. May perfect auspiciousness and goodness pervade and increase. May God's spirits and humans be brought under control, and at all times and in every circumstance, may enlightened activities be accomplished according to my supplications. As the glory and protector of all wandering beings, please perform activities to grant supreme and common cities without obstruction and effortlessly. May I vanquish all unfavorable circumstances, the enemies and hindrances with wrong views and the like, and may perfect auspiciousness and goodness pervade and prevail. Jaya Jaya, City City, Pala Pala. Sangha Lado Sungo Zimbet, Nijun Duyung Adarin Jin, 
We return to the Amitabha Sadhana on page 20. <coughs> Jasa Sansa Pabeto, 
Conqueror, Protector, Buddha Amitabha, and Noble Assembly of Loving Bodhisattvas, compassionately look upon us afflicted beings and guide us to the pure land of Sukhavati. In accord with your past bodhicitta vows, not wavering from the sacred bond, deity with great compassion, please exhaust all negative karma and empty samsara from its depths. At this very moment, please act as our guide. As I, with intense devotion, have thus invoked the enlightened mind, Right, red light rays of compassion radiate from the heart of Amitabha and dissolve into the hearts of myself and all beings. Self-grasping, misconceptions, and delusion have collapsed in themselves. The state of selfless dharmakaya is realized, and I rest in the nature of clarity and emptiness, free from grasping and elaboration. By all the <clears throat> limitless and sacred merit obtained through this meditation and recitation, may all beings drowning in the river of suffering attain the supreme state of Amitabha. Pervasive Dharmakaya, Protector Amitabha, Sambhogakayas, the loving assembly of Bodhisattvas, and Nirmanakayas, the gathering of Shravakas and Arhats, together with your retinues, please endow all beings with the auspiciousness to progress to Sukhavati. <laughs> Sanjay, Sanjay, Tamjay, 
A Maho, marvelous in the centers, the Buddha Amitabha, boundless light. To his right is Chenrezig, the Lord of Great Compassion, and to his left is the Bodhisattva Vajrapani, the Lord of Great Power. They are surrounded by an inconceivable assembly of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Extraordinary, limitless peace and happiness is the Buddha field called Bliss Endowed. When I and all beings pass from this life, may we be born there, unhindered by another samsaric birth. Once born there, may we behold the face of the Buddha Amitabha boundless light. By the power of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, bless me that I may attain this aspiration without hindrance. Okay. So now we'll do the wishing prayer of Dewa Chen. Starting on page two. Emaho, from here in the direction of the setting sun, beyond a multitude of innumerable worlds, slightly elevated is the land of the noble beings, the perfectly pure realm of Dewa Chen. Although Dewa Chen is not visible to our water bubble-like eyes, it can clearly appear to our mind. There resides the subduer and victorious one, measureless light, who is of ruby red color and blazing radiance. He is adorned with the top knot on his head, the wheels on his feet, and so on, the 32 signs of perfection and the 80 minor marks. He has a single face, two arms in the mudra of equanimity, holding an alms bowl, he wears the three dharma robes. In cross posture, he is seated on a lotus of a thousand petals with a moon disc from which rises a bodhi tree that serves as a backrest. From far away, he looks at me with his eyes of compassion. On his right is the bodhisattva eyes of compassionate wisdom, Avalokiteshvara, of white color holding in his left hand a white lotus, and on his left is the bodhisattva of great power, Vajrapani, of blue color, holding in his left hand a lotus marked with a vajra. Both of them extend their right hands toward us in the refuge, bestowing mudra. These three main deities appear like Mount Meru, the king of mountains, radiant, pouring forth splendor and illuminating. They dwell accompanied by their retinue of a trillion gelong bodhisattvas, all of them also of golden color, adorned with marks and signs, dressed in the three dharma robes of great resplendence. With a devotion that does not make any difference between near and far, I prostrate, full of respect, with my three doors. The Dharmakaya, limitless radiance, lord of the Buddha family, emanates from his right hand light rays that become Chenrezig, one billion secondary emanations of the mighty Chenrezig. From his left hand, he emanates light rays that become Tara, with one billion secondary emanations of Tara. From his heart, light rays go out, manifesting Padmasambhava, together with one billion secondary emanations of organ. I prostrate to Dharmakaya, measureless light. With the eyes of a Buddha, during all six periods of the day and night, he constantly regards us with love, all sentient beings. His enlightened mind is constantly aware of whatever thoughts or ideas arise in the mind of all sentient beings. His enlightened ear constantly hears distinctly, without confusion, whatever words are spoken by all sentient beings. I prostrate to the all-knowing measureless light. Except for those who have rejected the Dharma or accomplished the deeds of immediate retribution, all who have faith in you and make their wishing prayers will be born in Dewa Chen, and their prayers will be fulfilled. It is said that in the bardo he will come and will guide us into this land. I prostrate to the guide, measureless light. Your lifespan lasting for countless kalpas, you stay here and do not go beyond suffering. If we pray to you with one pointed respect, it is said that except for the complete ripening of karma, the end of our life force will happen only after 100 years and the various kinds of untimely death will be averted. I prostrate to protector Amitayas. It is said that it is of greater merit to join the palms out of faith on hearing the name of Amitabha and about Dewa Chen than to fill countless three thousandfold universes of vast extent with jewels and to offer them as gifts. For this reason, I respectfully prostrate to measureless light. 
Whosoever hears the name of Amitabha and develops just once a faith which comes from the depth of his heart and bones and is not empty talk will never lose the path to enlightenment. I prostrate to the protector, measureless light. From the time of hearing the name of Buddha, measureless light, until obtaining Buddhahood, I will not be born in an inferior body, but take birth in a good family and have a pure conduct in all lives to come. I prostrate to measureless light, gone to bliss. My body and all possessions, together with my roots of virtue, whatever offerings there are actually present or emanated by my mind, including the auspicious substances, the eight auspicious signs, the seven precious items, whatever offerings exist since all times, billions of 3,000-fold universes with their four continents, the central mountain, the sun, and the moon, together with all the wealth of gods, nagas, and humans, I take them up in my mind and offer them to Amitabha. By the force of your compassion, accept this for my own benefit. I lay open and confess all the non-virtuous deeds which have been committed from beginningless time until now by myself and by all sentient beings, headed by my father and mother. I lay open and confess the three unwholesome acts of the body, killing, taking what is not giving, and impure conduct. I lay open and confess the four unwholesome acts of the speech, lying, slandering, rough speech, and gossip. I lay open and confess the three unwholesome acts of mind, covetousness, malice, and wrong views. I lay open and confess the five deeds of immediate retribution which we accumulated, killing our father, our mother, our teacher, or an arhat, and intending to cause harm to the body of a victorious one. I lay open and confess the evil deeds similar to the deeds of immediate retribution, killing a gelong or getsu, making a nun fall, destroying a statue, stupa, or temple, and so on. I lay open and confess the evil acts of abandoning the Dharma, like abandoning the three supports, etc., the jewels and the temple and the supreme speech. I lay open and confess all these accumulated very negative, useless actions like a abusing bodhisattvas, which is of greater evil than to kill the sentient beings of the three realms. Compared to the five crimes of immediate retribution, it is more negative not to believe in the benefits of virtuous deeds and the difficulties resulting from non-virtue, and to think that it is not true and simply a pedagogical device, and this although we received explanations on the duration and extent of suffering in the hell realms and so on. I lay open and confess this negative karma that makes liberation impossible. I lay open and confess all breakage and damages of the discipline of individual liberation, including the five categories of fault, the four root downfalls, the thirteen with the remainder, the transgressions, the downfalls, the individually confessed damages, and the faults. I lay open and confess all the transgressions concerning the bodhisattva training, the four negative actions, the five five and eight downfalls, I lay open and confess the Samaya damages of the secret mantra, the fourteen root downfalls and the transgressions of the eight secondary vows. I lay open and confess all harmful deeds which I did not understand to be harmful, the non-virtues deeds that I have committed due, due to not requesting vows, and all evil deeds of which I was not aware of as actually being harmful, like impure conduct, sexual activity, drinking alcohol, and so on. I lay open and confess the serious transgressions and downfalls due to receiving refuge vows, initiations, and so on, but not knowing to keep the respective vows and commitments. Since a confession will not purify if there is no regret, I confess with great remorse, with shame, and with despair at my previous harmful deeds as if poison had attained the depth of my being. Since there will be no purification if I am not keeping to my vows from now on, I promise in my mind from today onwards never to commit non-virtuous activity even at the cost of my life. Please, Sugata, measureless light, and your heirs, grant me your blessings, so that my mind, my stream of being may be completely purified. When I hear about others who have accomplished unwholesome, who have accomplished wholesome acts, I abandon all unwholesome thoughts of jealousy and rejoice in their deeds with heartfelt joy, which is said to make us attain a merit equal to theirs. 
For this reason, I rejoice in whatever virtuous deeds are accomplished by realized and ordinary beings. I also rejoice in the vast activity accomplished for the benefit of beings due to developing the mind of supreme unsurpassable enlightenment. I rejoice in giving up the ten unwholesome and performing the ten wholesome acts to protect the life of others, to give offerings and to keep one's vows, to speak the truth, to reconcile adversaries, to speak peacefully, gently, and sincerely, and to engage in conversations which are meaningful, to have little desire to cultivate love and compassion, and to practice the Dharma in all these virtuous acts I rejoice. I exhort all those perfect Buddhas who dwell in all the myriad worlds of the ten directions to quickly and extensively turn the wheel of Dharma without waiting any longer. Please be aware of this request with your clairvoyant mind. I supplicate all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, holders of the teaching, and spiritual friends who intend to go beyond suffering to remain and not pass into nirvana. As it was shown, I dedicate all my virtuous acts of the three times for the benefit of all sentient beings. May all of us quickly attain unsurpassable enlightenment and stir the three realms of samsara from their depths. May these virtuous deeds quickly ripen for me and pacify the 18 causes of untimely death in this life. May I be endowed with the physical strength of a healthy adolescent in full bloom. May my material wealth never decline, but increase as the river Ganges in the monsoon. May I practice the noble Dharma without danger through demons or enemies. May all my wishes be fulfilled in accordance with the Dharma. May I be of great benefit for the teaching and for beings. May I accomplish the true meaning of this human existence. At the very moment when I and all those who have a connection with me pass beyond this life, May the emanation of Buddha Amitabha, surrounded by his retinue of a sangha of monks, actually come to meet us. On seeing him, may our mind be happy and joyful, and may there be no more suffering of death. By the force of their miraculous powers of the eight Bodhisattva brothers, appear in the sky and guide us, indicating the path to Dewa Chen. The suffering in the lower realms is unbearable, and the joy and well-being of gods and humans is impermanent. Understanding this, may I develop a fearful mind and develop disgust with samsara that had to be endured from beginningless time until now. Even those who go from one extreme human life to another experience countless times birth, old age, illness, and death in these difficult degenerate times when there are many obstacles and the well-being and happiness of humans and gods are similar to food mixed with poison. May I not even... A hair tip of may I not have even a hair tip of attachment? May I be free of even the slightest attachment to relatives, food, wealth, and companions which are impermanent and illusory like a dream? May I understand the countries, places, and lodgings to have no real existence, just like the places and houses in my dreams? Like a criminal liberated from prison, may I, without ever looking back, escape from this ocean of samsara that knows no freedom to the pure realm of Dewa Chen. Having cut all lengths of attachment and desire, may I fly off in space just like a vulture freed from a net and instantly reach Dewa Chen, traveling beyond the countless universes in the, th- in the western direction. May I see the face of Buddha Measureless Light, who is actually dwelling there, and purify all my veils. May I take the superior of the four kinds of birth and be miraculously born from the heart of a lotus flower, obtaining in one instant the complete perfect body. May I receive a body endowed with all the marks and the signs. If I doubt and hesitate to be born there, the blossom of the flower will not open for 500 years, but inside of it I will be happy and content with all enjoyments. Even though I will hear the word of the Buddha, may this fault of delayed meeting with the Buddha's face not happen to me. May the flower open as soon as I am born so that I may see the face of Amitabha. By the force of my merit and magical powers, may inconceivable clouds of offerings emanate from the palms of my hands as offerings to the Buddha's and his retinue. May at that moment the Tathagata stretch out his right hand, place it on my head, and may I attain the prophecy of enlightenment. Having listened to the Dharma, which is profound and vast, may my mind ripen and be liberated. Chenrezig and Vajrapani being the principal bodhisattvas, may I be blessed and guided by these two. Almost every day, countless Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions come to make offerings and see Amitabha in this land. 
At that time, may I may pay homage to all of them and obtain the nectar of the Dharma. Through my limitless magical powers, may I go in the morning towards the realm of true happiness to the glorious land and to the land's supreme activity and dense array. May I request initiations, blessings, and the vows of the Buddhas, Akshobhya, Ratnasambhava, Akmogasiddhi, Varachana, etc. Make many offerings and in the evening without any effort return to Dewachan itself. There are a billion realms of pure emanations such as the lands of Potala, Ala Kavanti, Karava, and the land of Urgan, with a billion Chinrizig, Tara, Vajrapani, and Pamasambhava, may I encounter them and make oceans of offerings, request initiations, and profound pith instructions, and quickly return without any obstacle to my place in Dewa Chen. May I clearly see with my divine eye all the close friends, monks, and students, and so on, and may I be able to guard and protect them, bestow blessings, and at the time of their death, guide them to this land. This fortunate eon that lasts for one eon equal to equals only a single day in Dewa Chen. May I live countless Dewa Chen eons without ever dying and continuously remain in this land. From Maitreya to Mopa, the final one, may I see all the Buddhas of the fortunate eon when they appear in this world. With my magical powers, may I go to meet these Buddhas, make offerings to them, and listen to the noble Dharma, and then again without any obstacles return to the pure land of Dewa Chen. Dewa Chen unites the totality of all qualities of the Buddha realms of 81 billion trillion Buddhas. May I be reborn in this land of Dewa Chen, outstandingly supreme among all pure lands. The ground which is made of jewels is as smooth as the palm of a hand and vast, spacious and radiant, blazing with light rays. When it is pressed down, it gives way, and on lifting up, it rebounds. May I be reborn in this joyful, pleasant land of happiness. There are wish-fulfilling trees made of many jewels with leaves of fine silk and fruits ornamented with jewels. On them gather flocks of emanation birds which chant in very agreeable ways, proclaiming the sounds of the profound and vast dharma. May I be reborn in this land of great wonders. The many rivers are of perfumed water with the eight qualities, and the water in the bathing ponds is of nectar. They are surrounded by stairs and cornices made of the seven kinds of jewels and display fragrant lotus flowers bearing brute fruit and emanating countless rays of lotus light. The tips of the light rays are adorned with emanated Buddhas. May I be reborn in this land of greatest marvel. May I be born in this land of great joy, where even the words eight unfitting conditions or hell are unheard of, and where never any suffering is known. Neither are the five or three emotions that are like poisons, nor sickness, mental illness, enemies, poverty, quarrels, and so on. May I be born in this land of limitless qualities where there is where there are no men or women, no beings born from a womb, since all noble beings born from within lotus flowers. Here all bodies are without any difference of golden color, endowed with the marks and signs, like the top knot on their head and so on, possessing all five special powers and the five eyes. Whatever I desire and think of, palaces made of a variety of jewels and all enjoyments arise by themselves, no effort is necessary. All needs are spontaneously fulfilled. There is no distinction between you and me clinging, no clinging to a self. All my wishes manifest as offering clouds arising from the palm of my hand, and everyone practices the dharma of the unsurpassable great vehicle. May I be born in this realm, source of all bliss and happiness. A fragrant breeze brings great showers of flowers, and from the trees, rivers, and lotus flowers arise heaps of clouds with all sorts of enjoyments, agreeable shapes, sounds, smells, tastes, and touches. There are no women but an abundance of emanated goddesses. These many offering goddesses continuously present offerings. At the time when I wish to rest, jewel palaces appear, and when I wish to sleep, beautiful thrones arise covered with many pillows and cushions of fine silk, together with birds, wish-fulfilling trees, rivers, music, and so on. When I wish to listen to them, they emanate the pleasant sound of dharma. When I do not want, no sound is heard. Also, the ponds and rivers are exactly as I wish, cold or warm, just as it is pleasing to me. May I be born in this land where all wishes are fulfilled. 
The perfect Buddha, measureless light, will remain in this land for countless eons without going into nirvana. May I act as his servant for all this time. Until his passing into peace, after two times the number of eons, as there are sand particles in the Ganges, his teaching will remain at that time. May I not be separated from his regent, Chinrezig, and uphold the noble Dharma. When at dusk the sun of the Dharma is setting, the very next morning Chinrezig will be a perfect Buddha. He will be the king whose light rays manifest the accumulated splendor of all noble ones. When this happens, may I see his face, make offerings, and listen to the noble Dharma. During the 66 trillion millions aeons that he will live, may I continuously be his servant, worship him, and uphold the noble Dharma without ever forgetting to remember his words. After he has passed into nirvana, his teaching will remain for three times 600 billion million eons. May I uphold the Dharma through all this time and never be separated from Vajrapani. When Vajrapani becomes the Buddha, completely reliable Tathagata king of abundant jewel-like qualities, with a lifespan and teaching just as those of Chenrezig, may we continuously be the servants of this Buddha as well, present our offerings and uphold all the noble Dharma. When my life is over, may I instantly obtain unsurpassable perfect Buddhahood in this or in one of the other pure realms. Having obtained pure, perfect Buddhahood, may all beings, just as with Amitayas, be ripened and liberated by simply hearing my name, and, be, and may there arise through countless emanations that guide sentient beings and through other means, spontaneously and without effort, a limitless benefit for beings. The Buddha's lifespan, his merit, his qualities, and his pristine awareness, as well as his splendor, are beyond measure. And it is said that someone who remembers your name, be it Dharmakaya, limitless radiance, measureless light, Amitabha, or Bhagawan of immeasurable life and primordial wisdom, Amitayas, will be protected against all dangers through fire, water, poisons, weapons, evildoers, demons, and so on, with the only exception of the full ripening of previous karma by remembering your name and prostrating. Please protect us from all dangers and sufferings and grant your blessing of excellent auspiciousness through the blessing of having mastered the three bodies of the Buddha, through the blessing of the truth of the unchanging Dharmata, and through the blessing of the undivided aspiration of the Sangha. May all my prayers be accomplished just as it is wished. I prostrate to the three jewels, Tayata Pensa Drewa Awa Bodhanaya Swoha. I prostrate to the three jewels, Namo Manjushriye, Namo Shushriye, Namo Uttamashriye Swoha. So we'll stop here and take a break, and we please return at 4 p.m. Arizona time. Uh, His Eminence Garchan Rinpoche will continue his teachings on the stages of meditation. Thank you.